Hey guys, I'm Matt Hernandez, and these are my top five reasons that I'm going to get the Sony A93. Okay, so there's been a lot of talk about the A93 for obvious reasons. It's going to be pretty revolutionary when it does come out. I actually was pretty, well, not pretty. I was very blessed to be invited to the Sony launch event where they announced it. So I got to shoot with it a little while. This isn't the A93, unfortunately. This is my A7R5. I have it up here to show you a couple things that are on this camera that aren't on my A1 that are part of the reason that I'm going to get the A93 because this camera is really great. The A9 is really great, but they have different things that are good at. And I feel like the A93 is going to combine a lot of those features. So for me, it's going to be pretty awesome and hopefully it's going to be the main camera that I use from now on. Um, okay, so the first thing obviously is the global shutter. So first, what is the global shutter? I think most people will probably know by now, but if you don't, the sensor on these cameras is read one line at a time from the top to the bottom. So there's a lot of things that can happen because of that. You can get banding. You can get jello in the background when you're taking video, which is known as rolling shutter. If you pan too quickly, like at football games, for example, um, a couple times this year, that definitely happened to me whenever a pass went downfield and I moved a little bit too quickly because I was tracking the ball and I was late then the background can, can bend just because of the way that it's read, not all at once, obviously, when the shutter or when the sensor is read at once with the global shutter, that will never be an issue again. Uh, I've never had the problem with golf clubs or baseball bats bending on the edge of the frame. I have heard a lot of other sports photographers talk about that. Action shots aren't my main thing. I mainly do portraits, but it would happen, I, I would think, with those two. And I've never noticed it. It may have, maybe I just didn't see it, but it's good to know that that's not going to be an issue anymore. That brings me to reason number three, which is 120 frames a second. And that does sound like overkill. When the Nikon Z9 came out and it shoots somewhere around that in JPEG, I thought, why would you ever need that? That's way too many pictures if you're a good action photographer. Even if you're not good, I feel like if you could shoot 30 frames a second, that should be enough to get what you need to get. Because if you look at the back of the camera and press play, if you take, you know, 100 frames in a row, at 30 frames a second, it looks almost like a movie on the back of the camera. Why would you need more than that? Well, I mean, you still might miss just a little bit of a, that one, just fraction of a second where you needed it at taking action shots and you didn't have it because it skipped that frame. That's not gonna be a problem. Still, that's a lot of files to have on your computer and, and, and eat up memory card and hard drive space. But the cool thing about the A9 III is gonna be, you can enable it when you want not by going into your settings and, and switching it, but there's gonna be a button, a burst button. I don't, I don't know if that's what it's called or not, but I feel like it was around where the ring finger is. It's around this area. So that means you can be shooting at 20 frames a second, 30 frames a second, and there might be a, a great moment happen in the middle of the game where you want that 120 frames a second, but you don't have time to go into the menu and switch it. All you gotta do is press that button and it'll enable it for however long you've got it pressed down and then you let go and you're back to 20 or 30 or whatever you were at before, whatever frames per second you were at before. So the other cool thing too is the fact that you can, it puts them together. So when you're looking at the back of the camera and going through your shots, then you can pick the one that you want in a burst and then delete the rest. So it doesn't have to put all 120 frames every second on your computer, which, cause that's again, a lot of hard drive space you're gonna have to eat up. All right, so that brings me to number four, the back LCD screen. So we're shooting with my A1 right now. We're filming this video with it, so I can't show you the back of that, but it just flips out just straight like that, okay? So the new, this screen and the one on the A9 III, it's gonna be identical. It comes out like that, yes, but it can also flip out. So if you're shooting yourself, then you can you can have, you can hold it or have it on a tripod or whatever and see what it's, what it's shooting. You can flip it around like this, have it to the side if you need to. It can go like that. It can go like that. So there's pretty much any way you need to have this thing, you can turn it that way. This, this to me is the perfect back screen. It goes anywhere you need it to. The A, and I, the A1 is a more capable camera than this, but I'll be honest with you, I use this camera more because of the back screen. Because all the other, all the other features are similar enough or close enough, the ones where this one falls short, it's close enough that this to me, completely changes everything. Like it's it's a deal breaker really. And that's why I don't use the A1 as much as I used to because of that right there. 
So thankfully the A9 III is gonna have that also. So that brings me to number five. And this is the reason that not many people are talking about. So I was excited to put it in my video in case people don't know about it. And this really pertains more to video, well, really only video, not stills, which that is obviously what I do mostly. I, I did, I'm starting to dabble in video some. So this is very important to me because I've always shot like this with the electronic viewfinder or the, the regular, you know, old school viewfinder in, the, in DSLRs. That's how I learned. That's how I've done it for 13 years. So when you're shooting video, especially at a game, now, if I'm doing a regular photo shoot, it's a little bit easier, but at games, to me, shooting like this and looking at the back of the screen and shooting action is, is not easy. And even with a monitor, like on a gimbal or, or, or a monitor with a rig, it still, to me, is not normal. I've done this for so long, looking through the viewfinder, it's just easier, for, especially with action, that's the main time. And so I struggled all season shooting football video, looking at the back of the camera or looking at the, the screen. Even though it flips out, this thing's great, and I have a monitor that I tried also, I just, it, it was very frustrating. I just wasn't, I was missing things. I didn't feel like I should miss. I was not tracking the ball well. So what you can do is, what I've always done is, I set it to single point, small spot. I think that's what it's called, is small, there's small, medium, and large spot. And you can track, you can, there's a tracking option on still photographs when, the, when you're in still mode. And I back button focus like most professionals do. And you can move that spot around wherever you want it to and then back button focus with, with that right there, with the F on button. You can't do that in video. You have to, it does track obviously, but you're kind of at the mercy of the camera. So there are different options. There's wide, there's zone, there's center fixed, and then there's small, medium, and large, and then expanded spot. And you can move the spots, the spot, the little spot on the square on the back, just like you can for still photographs. But the difference is, you don't press the focus button. The camera is going to focus what that square is on. So it doesn't seem like a huge deal, but it is for tracking because especially like during a game, if there's a lot of people jumbled up, like if the running back runs up the middle between the tackles or something and they're, you know, and he, and he comes out the other end, maybe there's a lineman or receiver closer to you and the camera might pick them up first and you don't want them to, right? Because you're not controlling the focus, the camera is controlling it. And then you get the spot, in the right place, but it might, who knows, if they're really close and they come out of nowhere, they might take over that focus point and, and, and then you miss the ball carrier coming out. So with, with this feature, you can set the AF on button for video to tracking on. So it's got your focus spot like normal, you can move it around wherever you want. And then when you find, when you've gotten on the person that you wanna have it on, before, let me back up a little bit. Before that, so if you don't want it to focus and hunt, you can set these custom buttons on your lenses to, focus hold so you can hold so you can put on the quarterback and then press this it's not going to refocus right and then once maybe he throws a screen pass then you let go of the focus hold button and you put the point on the receiver and then you press the af on button then it's going to enable tracking on and it's going to track him until he goes out of the frame and then even if he goes out of the frame comes back in if it's quick it might still keep him if he goes behind people it, it it's probably going to keep the focus on him then too so it's really cool and it changed everything for me I, in the and i didn't i didn't actually start really doing it till the end of the season and i i decided to switch cameras i was using my a1 and i switched to this one and in the second half i didn't look at the screen more i just said i'm just gonna look at the viewfinder and then use the af on or the for the for tracking on and it i didn't miss a shot in the first half i missed tons of shots it was kind of hit or miss honestly and second half, it was just like I was shooting stills. It was, it made it so much easier. Now, that being said, everybody might not want to shoot that way, but I think a lot of people that are used to shooting still pictures will really like that feature if they want to switch to video, which I think that most people by now have at least dabbled in video a little bit. It's, it, it's kind of short-sighted not to because everybody, most people want video and stills. So it's really good to know how to do both. And if, especially if you're shooting games, like for me, I take a lot of senior pictures Kids are going to go to college and play that kind of thing. They they're wanting recruiting films and things like that. So I'm, that's why I'm started shooting games. And so it's important to be able to get the shot that you need and not miss it because the focus isn't right. Okay, that does it. Those are the top five reasons that I'm going to get the Sony A93. I can't wait till it comes out. It's going to be a complete game changer and a beast. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I hope everybody enjoyed the video. If you did, I'd appreciate it. hit the like button subscribe and hit the bell so that you know when I post new videos, there's going to be a lot more to come. We'll see you again next time.